My question to you is, what's holding you back? That's my question. Because you know more than enough to get started. We've dealt with you many times. I see you got some fruits of repentance. You got your beard and you got the hair on your head. That used to be a problem, but you over that. So what's stopping you? What's holding you back? Oh. Uh... Um, I don't know, nothing really. Sound like you don't have no reason, right? I mean, but between, you know, I guess at one time I probably could have said transportation, but I, I can't necessarily say it that, you know. Um, even my son, he interested, you know. Um, so, so you have your son, right? You're supposed to be setting an example for, right? right. You know the truth. He's caught wind of the truth. And you still, you're not making haste like the scripture says so? Give me uh, Matthew 19, whosoever break five. Five and 19, whosoever break one of these commandments. Five and Give me that. You know what though, I got, I got a question about the 12 tribes. All right, I want, I want you to hear this before you ask your question. Read. For the book of Matthew chapter five, verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Like you learned about congregating earlier, right? That's one of those. Well, con I wouldn't even say congregating is a least commandment. That's very major. Read on. And shall teach men so. So, right? You have certain laws that you're in the midst of breaking. And you're teaching your son to break those laws also. How are you doing that? By your example. By you knowing better and not doing better. By you knowing it's hard time to wake out of sleep, but you're not making no moves, right? So you're setting that example to your son that it's cool to know that you're an Israelite and not do nothing about it. And God is not okay with that. Read it again. The book of Matthew, chapter five, verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments Read. and shall teach men so, uh -huh. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, do you understand what that last part mean? Being called the least in the kingdom of heaven? Break it out. What does that mean? Shit, damn near like them white folks are going to be in heaven. That's Not crazy. damn near. You're going to be in a worse estate than the white folks. Give me, give me that Isaiah 66, 23. Hey. Because the white folks, they're going to be working in the kingdom. But the Israelites, who teach men to break the commandments and who break the commandments, they're going to be in a worse state than the Edomites. Right. Now, how does that go? You being an Israelite, the kingdom of heaven is for you, and you got dogs and heathens in a better position than you and what's supposed to be your kingdom. Do you want that to be your fate? Do you want that to be the fate of your son? Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 24. Thank you. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses. Who's the they? The they is those Israelites who get their act together and keep these commandments. Right. right. Who don't just know that they're Israel, but they rehearse the righteous acts. Right. Read. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses. Now, it says carcasses. What's the carcass? A dead body, right? Read. Of the men that have transgressed against me. Of the men that have what? That have transgressed against me. That's the men who taught men to break those least commandments and who broke those least commandments. Right. That's what's being um, called least in the kingdom of heaven. Right. That you just are dead. You, you, you basically in a museum. You on display an example what not to do. Bring it on! Don't play with God to think that you just gonna do what you want out here and stroll in the, in the, in the kingdom. That's not gonna happen. You're not gonna be like the Edomites. Like I said, they're gonna be working. They might get beat here and there, but guess what? They got a job. They 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 slaves. It's better than being dead. So why would you want to be in a worse estate to them? Right. Than them. And guess what? That's after, give me 2 Peter 3 and 10. That's after this. That's not even the beginning of it. What I'm showing you is what's laying here, what's waiting on you if you don't make haste and keep these commandments. 
read. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. Bring it on. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You don't know, none of us know when, Christ don't even know when it's coming. But you could, you could bet your bottom dollar he ready to go. Right. You just was asking about, um, is Trump, Trump, how Trump gonna set it off because he finna be out of there tomorrow. Guess what? Whether Trump, Biden, whoever set it off, it's coming. But where will you be when it go down? Right. What side will you be on? Right. That's what the scriptures say. Don't worry about how the ungodly should be punished. Right. But worry about how you gonna be saved. Right. Read it again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Read. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Uh-huh. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So just imagine your flesh, right? Do you want this to be your fate? No. Now I'm going to show you somehow you on the clock with the Most High. Earlier I heard you say you go with the Most High. I'm going to show you on the clock with the Most High. Give me that in Titus after the uh, second or third ammunition. Okay. Give me that. Bring it out. Because you watch videos. We done dealt. This is like my fifth time seeing you out here. You know some of us. I'm going to show you how you on the clock with the Most High. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 10. Bring it on. A man that is inheriting after the first and second admonition, reject. You're under that category right now, according to the Most High. Because there's been more than second or third warning. Bro, you need to keep the commandments. Bro, it's time to put some fringes on. Right. It's time to start congregating. Right. It's time to start learning these other laws. It's time to get on your process of repentance right. and continue it. So no, you're not good with the Most High. Bring it out. It's it's time, like the officer brought out. It's it's high time to awake out of sleep. Teach. You're on the clock. Destruction is coming. You done heard all these scriptures. If this does not move you, then you will be least in the kingdom of heaven. Right. And if the Lord, if your son is chosen, your son is going to be here. And if he is not chosen, he's going to be called least in the, in the kingdom of heaven. But if you have something to do with that, you have to pay for that. That's the scripture we read earlier in Matthew chapter 5. Right. Now, what, what's your question about the 12 tribes? You know, I, like, like <clears throat> when, the, when the Atlantic slave trade came, you know, they say most, most of the slaves, most of the Israelites went to South Africa. Not, you know, I know they had a, a certain number that went to North America, but a lot of them went to Central and South America. Give me but this is my question. If it was Judah that was on those slave ships, then wouldn't that mean like the Haitians, wouldn't that mean they Judah too? Instead of being Benjamin? No. Judah is only one tribe. The nation of Israel as a whole went into slavery on ships. Right. It wasn't just Judah. Right. Because even the so called Hispanics, they went into slavery on ships before Judah did. Right, right. right. Oh. All of Israel, all of those tribes fit the scripture we're about to read. No, sir. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Remember, Moses was talking to all Israel. He said, so that thee is all Israel that the Lord was going to scatter. How did he scatter us? On slave ships. And it's more than the transatlantic slave trade. There's the sub-Saharan slave trade. It wasn't just Judah. What about like like the all mex people who, you know, the natives who were just here before the slave trade? Guess what? When See, Christopher they, no, I'm saying they weren't scattered. I, I want you I want you to listen. When Christopher Columbus came over here, guess who he was sending word to? He was sending word back to the Queen of England, right? And those people, guess what they were sending people? Those same natives, they were sending them back into Spain. 
Right. Or sending them to Portugal, See? places like that, sending them back to Europe. Like I said, 1492, the 1500s, they went into slavery before us so-called blacks did, See? before Judah did, before the Southern Kingdom did. 1440, yeah. So all Israel fit that. And go to Joel chapter 3. I'm going to show you something else. Bring it out. Because you ask, you ask, like, during the transatlantic slave trade, those that came over here, the, the Haitians and so on and so forth, right? And then you asked about um, the people that was originally South there. Africa, right? No, I didn't see South Africa. South, South you said America. a lot of them, a lot of them went to South Africa. South America. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, Brazil. We went to, we went to everywhere. We were scattered everywhere. We were sent in China. We were sent in, in uh, Europe. We were sent to South America. We were sent to the islands. We were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Right. The Meaning everywhere. But what about the people who was already here? And what, and I just answered here. that. I just answered that with the last script. I showed you they were sent back on ships. No, I'm talking about that was here before ships. Who? What people? You speaking about the natives? Yeah. Yeah, like that's what I showed you. They got sent in the 1400s. Before they were sent back. Talking about before that. They didn't go into slavery like on before, ships like until before, the 1400s. Like before Jesus, even before Read this. Christ, BC. The book of Joel, chapter three, verse six. The children also of I, Judah I'm go and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. So, the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, right? What you was talking about, the blacks. The Haitians, the so-called Jamaicans. Like before Christ even came on earth, before, you know, before BC. They, you speak, I think you have it backwards. They came over to the side on ships. No. But that wasn't in slavery. Right, right, right. No slavery. I know, I answered that for you. I don't think you're listening to what I'm saying. They migrated over here on ships. Right. Right. Right, right. right. And the point where they went into slavery on ships, was in the 1400s when they came when right, they were right, sent right. back to Europe and Spain and so on and so forth right you you got it right 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 okay right. read this again the book of Joel chapter 3 verse 6 bring it out the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians so they were sold unto the Grecians now by this time the Grecians had already spread out and conquered most of the world Right. So again, we were scattered everywhere. And this is talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You understand? Right, right. So it wasn't, they wasn't just scattered in Africa. It wasn't just South America. It was scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But what I'm saying is like, like even before Christ came on earth, the original people, let's say that was in Puerto Rico, that was in Jamaica, Cuba, or whatever, these were Israelites as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was just. I was just. But curious. the point I'm trying to get you to understand it was it wasn't until a certain time that these prophecies came to pass. That they became. Yeah. They which did. was the late 1400s, the um, the 1500s, and the early 1600s. Right. It's when the slavery on ships came to pass. I got you. I got you. That's the point. You have to connect the history with the prophecy of the Bible. Right. right. I got you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Your son, how long has your son been doing? Probably about the past two years. The past two years? Yeah. And he watches us or he watch everybody? Because I heard you say you watch everybody. I don't watch everybody, but I watch some stuff. I mean, but, um, I mean, I've been known. You know, I've been known. You see how that spirit is trickling down to your son? You say your son's been doing two years. Yeah, he's been on for the past. Did he years. congregate with anybody? No. You see how that spirit is trickling down to your son? That blood is on your hands. If your son dies in the midst of his son, how does he learn in Israel? Did he learn from you? Oh, uh, basically. So he learned from you and he followed your example. I want you to understand that. You're already, the Lord is already trying to show you that men can follow you. But first, you have to be taught, right? Give me that in Hebrews 5 and 12. 
Your son is trying to follow in your footsteps. Most of our young black men, they're following the footsteps of their fathers who want to be rappers, drug dealers, murderers, so on and so forth. Your son wants to follow you in keeping the commandments. Right. You need to set an example for him. Right. You need to set an example. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Come on. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. So you it's not much you can teach your son. Because anything that you do here, that understanding is going to escape you by you not keeping the commandments. Right. So you have to come and be taught. He has to come and be taught. Right. Judah 8 and 24. Bring it on. I got a road, man. I want you to hear this before you. We about to roll too. Stand right there. I want you to hear this scripture. We finna go to 8 and 24. The book of Judah, chapter 8, verse 24. Read. Now therefore, O brethren, let us do an example. Let us do what? Let us do an example. And this is talking about a righteous example. An example of what to do. Read. An example to our brethren. Because their hearts depend upon us. Because guess what? Your son is depending on you. Right. His father to show him in the way that he should go. Right. That's your job as a man, as a father. Gee. The scriptures say train up a child in the way that they should go. King David taught Solomon to keep the charge of the Lord and to show himself to be a man. Make it plain. That's the position that you're in to do with your son. Teach. Or you're going to answer the call. Or you're going to do what God has commanded you to do. Or are you going to be put to death in the midst of your sins with people who oppress you all your life. No, I don't think that. Well, the Bible said, talk no more is seen proudly and actions away. Right. So if we continue to see you out here, never at the school and no fringes or anything like that, then we know you're just full of it. Right. And the Bible say after the second and third admonition, reject. So we're not going to come up here and answer buku questions from you when you can come to the school. Right. We're going to deal with other brothers and sisters who want to learn. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.